I was born in uh, 1947 in Milan, which is in the uh, north of Italy. I was already a science fiction fan since, since I was born, you know, always crazy about science fiction, horror, but mostly science fiction. And I started reading books, uh, looking for movies, you know, in the late 50s when I was a kid. It was very difficult to see science fiction movies in the theaters here in Italy because science fiction was considered even worse than pornography, you know, something like uh, only the stupid and the idiots go and see science fiction or read science fiction. When I was uh, 12, no, let's say 14, I, st I bought my Brownie Kodak camera for $10, something like that. And I started making movies, I mean, eight millimeters, you know, with my sister in my house. Uh, and uh, I was doing my, my own version of uh, uh, Roger Corman's Pit and the Pendulum and things like that. Crazy movie, if you see them today, just for fun. But that's how I started, you know, I did the, some, from some guy, a couple of years later, I got an 8 millimeters camera with uh, stop motion. You could do a frame at the time, so I did the, my own Martian moving uh, the, the hand, the tentacle, you know, in the stop motion and things like that. And after a while, I start editing. I did buy for a few dollars a small machine with a tape, and I had to watch 8 millimeters like this. And I had to watch against the light, the, the film, to see where to cut and, and tune it. And uh, I remember when I started doing more bigger movie from, for a kid, you know, I had uh, meters and meters of film all around the table. And I was looking here and there trying to see what to put together, you know. And that sounds crazy, but really, when I later started working in the professional world, those early days were a treasure because it was the same thing in the professional movie world you do the same thing but in a much easier way because you have moviolas you know you have a cameraman you you have helpers who help you the job is the same so i i can say i really learned the job being a kid I started uh, being in contact with many American writers, which were fam famous at the time. I was in contact with Frederick Paul, Ray Bradbury, and uh, several others. I became, in uh, 64 or 65, I became the Italian correspondence, correspondent for Famous Monsters of Filmland, which was a very famous magazine among uh, science fiction lovers and horror lovers. And while still being at school, I started working as a science fiction writer. I did start uh, selling a few short stories. You know, I started very, very early. I sold my first science fiction story when I was uh, 16, I think. Uh, it's through science fiction, uh, I met a guy who worked in advertising. And I started working with him. I knew an editor. And I started working as an assistant editor. And then I did some job as a movie synchronizer, putting the sound, the Italian dubbed soundtracks uh, on the original uh, movie. And that was the beginning of my experience in the professional movies, you know, because I wanted to know how the professional movie making was. The first full length feature I did actually is The Tunnel Under the War, which I made in uh, early 69. That picture was born out of my friendship with many American science fiction writers. At the time I had became acquainted with Frederick Paul, who was uh, the editor of the American leading science fiction magazine, Galaxy. And he had written novels, many novels and many stories. Among his stories, there was a 1954 story story called The Tunnel Under the Wall, which was a beautiful science fiction sociological story against uh, the overpower of advertising and television. And, uh, and I, I love this story, and so one day I 
Paul came to Italy, I met him, we became even more friends, you know, and, and one time I asked him, I would like to do, to try to do a movie version of your story. And he said, uh, but how much is going to cost to me, the rights? To, and he said, uh, Luigi, uh, I've seen friends of mine like Asimov, uh, Hannah Line selling their books to the movies, but nobody ever asked me a story for a movie to me. So I'll, I'll give you, you my story for, for free because I want to, maybe this may start something for me too, you know. So he, he gave me the permission to, to go ahead with the project without paying him. I put together some friends, uh, some finance myself, and we did the tunnel under the world. Uh, really, it was a crazy enterprise. We shot it in four days, you know. It was really, really a crazy enterprise. But it's, uh, it's, uh, you say, it's a free-form movie, much experimental. In those times, I really like uh, the Jean-Luc Godard, Alphaville. So it's a movie which has really been impressed by Alpha Billies in that kind of style. And for Years and years, that picture played in experimental theaters, you know, in underground theaters, with the puzzle audience, you know, because the story was very difficult. Then one day, not many years ago, a picture came, which was called The Truman Show, with uh, Jim McCarry, I think. And well, The Truman Show is the tunnel under the world. It's exactly that story with a few changes. So after that, people watching my movie said, oh, good, good, because they started understanding what it was really about. But the big problem was still uh, that I had to move to Rome because all the movies were being made in Rome, actually. And uh, I did succeed in doing that in 69, when I was uh, 22. Because uh, I moved to Rome and uh, in the meanwhile I was... Uh, I did really like very much uh, music, pop music, rock music. And I started selling a few articles on Beatles, on Donovan, uh, on Rolling Stones, uh, to, uh, to the leading Italian pop music uh, news uh, magazine. I always put shock title to them, you know, like uh, on the pop uh, newspapers, you know. One, one day I read an interview on American paper in which John Lennon said uh, bad things about Paul McCartney, something like that. And so, I wrote an article called uh, The Beatles Break Up, you know, John Lennon goes away and things like that to sell it, you know, and the guy bought it and put it uh, on, uh, on a newsstand as the main title. And the, this is the, the funny thing, crazy thing. The magazine was on the newsstand on Monday and Wednesday came the news that the Beatles broke up. <laughs> and so they called me, they called me after one week and told me, Luigi, join us. You you come into the new uh, to work with us uh, on a steady job, you know. And so I was hired in uh, in the magazine, and uh, the magazine was in Rome, and I could come to Rome and have a, a a monthly salary, you know, to pay for an apartment and things like that. That I was starting. Being a, 
a science fiction fan, I started uh, trying to meet uh, the Italian filmmakers I really like, like Mario Bava, Antonio Margheriti, Riccardo Freda. Those were the horror and science fiction uh, filmmakers of the time. They told me I was the, the only one Italian journalist who wanted to meet them, you know, because they were considered here cheap filmmakers, very cheap. So I became friends uh, with all of them, actually. And after a while, all of them proposed me to, to write some story for them, for a movie project and things like that. That's why I started working uh, with them, working with Bava on project. They didn't come to a film, but we worked together. I worked with Margheriti on another project. He, he bought one story of mine and wanted to make a movie out of that. Then one day I went to, to a theater and saw a picture called The Bird with a Crystal Plumage by a new director called Dario Argento. And I loved that. And so I decided, well, I want to meet this guy. You know, I want to make an interview with him. I want to know him because I, th I thought he was much more modern than in, in style and in concept than Bava and Margheriti. And I met the guy, and again, the picture was not making money here at the box office. And I was the first journalist who was willing to meet the director. So I met with Dario's father, and he was very happy that one the journalist wanted to meet his son, you know. So I arranged an interview with me, a meeting with me and Dario. And then we met, and we became friends. And one day he told me, Luigi, I want you to work with me on my new project, which is going to be called Four Flies on Grey Velvet. That's how I became part of the professional movie world. I worked for six, eight months with Dario writing that picture. We worked uh, on several things together. I, we made uh, a couple of other scripts. One became a movie and a couple didn't make it, but one became a movie. And then uh, they had a project for a TV series. And Dario said, Luigi, I'm going to make you start as a director on my series. And uh, it was the, which was the door into darkness. This episode was a big hit. It was the n number one in the series. Everybody loved it. We were working with TV at the time, and you could not even show a knife on TV at the time. Let's forget about blood. And so I did write a story which was really scary, but without blood, with, without anything. And, uh, and it worked, you know, because uh, TV accepted, the crazy thing is TV accepted my story without complaints, because there was no knife and no blood. But the TV people said, OK, OK, no blood, no knife. Till it was put on the screen, you know, till it was put on the air, they got a lot, a lot of complaints from people. They were deluged you know, by protest by people because it was really hard, you know. And then they realized that it's not really blood or, or a knife which makes the real horror. You know? Dario was contacted by a Milan producer to, 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 do, to act as consultant on some uh, thriller project this guy had. And, and Dario went uh, with me to the producer. And with, with my big surprise, he told me, no, I'm not going to act as a consultant because I have my own business, I have my own company. I don't want to work with others, but you can get Luigi with my assistant and get him as a director. 
and uh, he was very, very kind of him, you know, really. I was surprised, <laughs> almost shocked, you know. But he, he talked a lot about me to the producer, said, uh, you want to do a thriller? Get Luigi, Luigi is perfect for you. And he did convince the producer, you know. So while I was still there working with Davio, I, the producer called me and we started talking about uh, a thriller project, a giallo project, you know. And uh, that's how the picture, the spider, was born.